In example four, we are required to design a reinforced concrete beam. And uh, the beam is six meter long. It's a simply supported beam. And um, it, is, it, has, it is supporting a live load of 12 kilonewton per meter um, and a uniform superimposed service dead load of 14 kilonewton per meter apart from its own self weight. Other details given for the beam are it is an external beam uh, for a residential building in Townsville, which is less than 50 kilometers from the coastline. And um, we have to design the reinforced concrete beam. So, um, so it is a six meter long simply supported beam. The beam is subjected to the live load of 12 kilonewton per meter and the dead load is a combination of its own self-weight plus the superimposed dead load of 14 kilonewton per meter. The beam is 6 meter long. Now other details given for the beam are it is in Townsville. If we look into the AS 3600 table 4.3, uh, Townsville is a near coastal line for less than 50 km from the coastline. So it is a B1 exposure condition. So the exposure condition for this beam is B1. Now for the exposure condition B1, we can find out what is the minimum compressive strength required and also what is the clear cover required for the beam. So if we look into again AS3600 in table 4.10.3.2, you can see that for the exposure condition B1, the minimum strength required for the concrete is 32 megapascal and the clear cover required is 40 millimeter. So it is from 4.10.3.2. FC dash should be greater than or equal to 32 MPa and clear cover should be 40 millimeter minimum. And that's coming from now with that we know what is the um, minimum compressive strength required let's take it as a 32 megapascal concrete and the clear cover as well so what clear cover means is that if this is your reinforced concrete beam and these are your reinforcement we don't know how many reinforcements are required and the clear cover means the from the bottom of the reinforcement to the bottom of the beam so this is called as a clear cover and which is 40 millimeter for this case so that is known already for FC dash equal to 32 megapascal concrete we know that um, alpha 2 can be obtained from AS 3600 which will give it as 0 0.80 and gamma also from the same plot 0 0.95 minus 3. before we design the beam we need to know the self weight of the beam so that we can take into account while designing the beam but we don't know the cross section of the beam so we cannot find out the self weight so how we proceed is that we will estimate this cross section of the beam we will estimate the self weight of the beam and we'll proceed with the design and if required we'll change the cross section so we'll use some thumb rules to calculate calculate or estimate what is the depth and what is the width of the beam to start with and then find or estimate the self weight of the beam and we'll proceed from there so the for the preliminary design or for preliminary sizing of the beam we can use some uh, thumb rule and the depth of the beam d is taken as between l over 10 
to L over 2L, where L is the total span of the beam. So uh, for a simply supported beam, the depth of the beam is usually taken as um, L over 10 to L over 2L. Now we have the beam length is 6 meter. So let's take in at L over 2L. So we can find out L is uh, 6 meter, 6,000 millimeter. Divide, taking it as 2L, we get it as 500 millimeter. Furthermore, the width of the beam B is taken as between 0 0.6D to 0 0.8D, where D is the overall depth of the beam. Now, taking it as a 0 0.6 uh, and D is 500, we compute it as a 300 millimeter. So let's start with the beam that is the width is. 300 millimeter so once the cell uh, once the cross section is estimated we can find out what is the self weight of the beam the depth multiplied by the width meter multiplied by the density of the concrete which is 25 kilonewton per meter cube uh, we get it as kilonewton per meter now here the density of con reinforced concrete RC is taken as 25 kilonewton per meter cube so we are multiplying with the cross section we will get the self weight of the beam which comes as 3.75 kilonewton per meter now we have the self weight we have the dead load and live load so we can calculate what is the factored load uh, using the load combinations so using the load combination 1.35 g which is the dead load that means it is a combination of the self weight 3.75 plus the superimposed dead load is 14 so this comes out to be 14. and using the another load combination 1.2 z plus 1.5 q where q is the live load Dead load is again 3.75 plus 14 uh, plus Q is 12. That gives us factored load as 39.3 kN per meter. And we know that this is critical. W star, the factored load is 39.3 kN per meter. Now, once we know the factor load, we can find out what is your maximum moment in the beam. Maximum moment of the beam for a simply supported uniformly distributed load is at the mid span, which is given by m star is w star l square by 8. For a simply supported beam, maximum moment is w star l square by 8. For w star, we already calculated as 39.3, and the span of the beam is 6 meter. So we get the maximum moment acting on this beam is 176.0. So that's the maximum moment that we have to design our beam for. For the design of the beam, as we are free to choose the section of the beam and the reinforcement, we want the beam to be failing in the ductile mode. So we will take the KU value in such a way that it will be failing in ductile mode. So as explained in the lecture video, uh, for designing of the beam, we will take the KU value between 0 0.15 to 0 0.3 to make sure that it is a ductile failure or it is a tension failure mode. So let's choose. For this example, you can choose any value between 0.15 to 0.3, but let's take it as 0 0.2. Let's proceed with that. And we know the equation where we can use to find out um, the width and the depth of the beam. So please refer to your lecture notes and the lecture video. So BD square should be greater than or equal to M star.
So we can estimate what is B and D of the beam depending on your external moment M star. The external moment M star here is 176.85 10 raised to the power 6 in Newton millimeter. And phi, um, as we want the beam to be ductile, phi will come as 0 0.85 because we have taken KU as 0.2. So phi is taken as 8 phi because we want it to be in ductile mode. Alpha 2, we calculated 0 0.8. Uh, Fc dash is 32. Gamma is 0 0.89. And Ku, we are taking as 0 0.20. And it is 1 minus 0 0.5, 0 0.89, 0 0.20. So with that, we will get the right hand side as 50.12 into 10 raised to the power 6 Newton millimeter. So here there are two unknowns here, both B and D both are unknown. So how we proceed is we will take one of the values and, um, and then find out another value. So as we started B is 300 millimeter. Let's take B as 300 millimeter and find the depth of the beam. So taking the width of the beam as 300 millimeter and plugging back into this equation. So D should be greater than or equal to uh, 408, 409 millimeter. So um, if width of the beam is 300 millimeter to satisfy this equation, the the effective depth of the beam should be greater than or equal to 409 millimeter. Now, if your effective depth is uh, 409 millimeter, what would be your overall depth? Again, uh, drawing your um, beam section once again. So your effective depth is coming from here to the center of the reinforcement, which is this one. and your overall depth is up to the base of the beam. This is your overall depth and this is your effective depth. And from the center of the reinforcement to the bottom of the beam is what we call as effective cover. Cover, so effective cover is a clear cover from the bottom of the beam, reinforcement to the bottom of the beam plus half the diameter of the bar that will give you effective cover. So once you know the effective depth, you can find out what would be your overall depth. We know that the clear cover required is 40 millimeter for this exposure condition. So, and also what we don't know yet is that what is the diameter of the bar we don't know yet. So uh, for example, if we choose normal ductile 24 millimeter bars again we don't know what diameter bar we will be using what will diameter of the bar we will need but for now let's take it as a 24 millimeter because we have to estimate what is the effective depth and we'll change it as required so if the 24 millimeter bars are used so the overall depth of the beam should be greater than or equal to effective depth which is 409 we calculate plus half the diameter of the bar that is 24 divided by 2 this half the diameter of the bar from here to here plus the clear cover that is from the bottom to the bottom that means clear cover so d should be greater than or equal to your small d is 409 here plus this is 12 plus the clear cover is 40 millimeter so that will come out to be that will imply that your D should be greater than or equal to 461 millimeter. So your overall depth of the beam should be at least greater than 461 millimeter. And we know that the initial D we have chosen initial depth chosen for this beam was 500 millimeter when we did the preliminary sizing 
and we found out that the depth of the beam should be greater than 461 millimeter for B equals to 300 millimeter. And now we found out that that overall depth is adequate. So let's go on with um, 500 millimeter depth. So let's therefore provide width of the beam as 300 millimeter and the overall depth of the beam as 500 millimeter. So with that, the effective depth, actual effective depth will be slightly different. 500 minus 24 divided by 2 minus 40 millimeter. So that will come out to be 448 millimeter is your actual effective depth for the calculations. Now once we find the size of the beam, we have to find out what is the area of reinforcement required. So equating the horizontal and the vertical forces, we can find out what is the area of uh, reinforcement required. Reinforcement required by using T equal to C and area of steel multiplied by, because it is tension failure, AST multiplied by FSY should be equal to alpha 2 fc dash gamma k u d and width of the beam b therefore the area of reinforcement required so uh, we found out that the area of reinforcement required is 1224.87 millimeters square now we can achieve this reinforcement by few different ways. So if we are using, um, say, two uh, normal ductile reinforcement of 28 millimeter diameter, your area of reinforcement will be 1, 2, 3, 1. So that is satisfies the requirement. I mean, 2 and 28 bars um, gives the area of 1231.5 millimeters square. Similarly, 3 and 24 millimeter bars, the area for that will come out to be um, 1357.2 millimeters square. It is slightly greater than what is required, that is 1224. And another one is 4 and 20 millimeter bars can also be used. And if we use 4 and 20 millimeter bar, AST would be 1256. So we can use any of these reinforcement and they would give a um, safe beam. But let's choose um, 4 and 20 bars because usually the 20 millimeter bars are easy to work with and it is giving off adequate uh, area. So let's choose this one, uh, four and 20 millimeter bar. One thing to note here though, is uh, whether we can fit uh, four bars in that 300 millimeter width of the beam we have to check it so again uh, drawing uh, your beam so um, we want to provide four and 20 bars so can we fit them within this 300 millimeter space we need to check it whether it is good to check it because sometimes you, you might provide eight bars but you may not physically be able to fit them in that 300 millimeter space uh, width of the beam so we can check it quickly so um so how we'll check it is that we are providing four in 20 in 20 bars that means four into 20 plus there are three spaces between this bar one two three and those three spaces should be two times the diameter of the bar so two into 20 Um, so the space between the bars should be 2 times the diameter of the bar, so 2 times 20, plus um, the clear cover on either side of the bars, on either side, should be um, same as, taking it same as the 40 millimeter clear cover for the bottom, so 
both sides taking clear cover 40 millimeter we see that um, it, it comes out to be it comes out to be 280 millimeter which is less than 300 millimeter our width of the beam so it so 20 millimeter bars can uh, 420 millimeters can, bars can we can easily fit in there so that's fine Or in 20 millimeter bars and the overall height of the beam is 500 millimeter 500 and the width of the beam is 300 millimeter so for the design question you always have to provide a uh, um, the drawing as well on what you are suggesting for the beam now the final step for the design question is always the design check because we have we have made quite a bit of assumption as we proceeded so we have to always make sure that the final design that we are proposing is safe so let's do the final design check now so how we do this design check is that now we already know the details of this beam uh, we can find out what is the moment capacity like exactly like how we analyze for a singly reinforced beam so let's do the final design check we equate c equals to t so uh, c is alpha 2 fc dash gamma k u d b and ast multiplied by fsy we can do this one very quickly what would be your actual value of ku because we assume ku is 0 0.2 in the beginning so we have to find out actual value of ku so area of reinforcement that you provide is 256.63 and this is 500 megapascal tensile yield strength of the steel alpha is 0 0.80 fc dash is 32 gamma is 0 0.89 and um, k um, d is we we have to calculate the d uh, but b in this case is 300 millimeter now to calculate the d it is overall depth we have provided is 500 minus now we are using 20 millimeter bar so 20 divided by 2 minus the clear cover 40 so it will change slightly compared to what we did before so it comes as 450 millimeter because we are using smaller reinforcements so your d is slightly different than what was before so this comes to be 450 millimeter so if you calculate the ku it comes as 0 0.20 so it is exactly like what we started with so it is uh, it is okay now we need to check whether of course it as you can as you know ku is less than 0.545 so the steel will eat but anyway we will quickly check what would be your steel strain 0 0.003 minus ku which is 0 0.20 divided by 0 0.20 and this comes out to 0 0.012 the steel strain is 0 0.012 which is greater than 0 0.0025 so uh, therefore steel is uh, yielding it is a tension failure which is a desirable ductile failure so once we know it is a tension failure your ultimate moment capacity uh, mu can be obtained by t multiplied by z and it is exactly same as what we did before fsy gamma k u d over 2 so computing this one the area of reinforcement that we provided is 63 multiplied by 500 and of 
this is 450 minus 0 0.89 KU that we calculate is 0 0.20 again and D is 450 divided by 2 so we compute the ultimate moment capacity of this beam by taking the actual values now is 257.57 kilonewton meters so that's your ultimate moment capacity now to find the design moment capacity we have to multiply with the phi value so the phi value is from table 2.2.2 .2 .2. in AS 3600 so phi value is given as uh, 1.24 minus 13 multiplied by KU naught divided by 12 and now putting the value of KU as 0 0.2 you get phi as um, because phi can't be greater than 0 0.85 so it gives us phi as 0 0.85 now um, the design moment capacity phi MU is 0 0.85 which is strain reduction factor and your mu is 257.57 so that gives your design moment capacity as um, 218.9 so this is your design moment capacity and as you can see phi mu is greater than M star that is the external load caused by the live load and dead load factor live load and that load that we saw so your beam is safe from strength requirement and also as KU is 0 0.2 it is ductile as well so it satisfies both the strength and the ductility requirement as well